Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Wow, this, the room just went tense for a second. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure why, but good morning. This is a very, very important morning for Action SA. It's a massive milestone for our organization. I'm particularly proud of where we are this morning, and I think we will be one of the first organizations to do what we need to do at the level that is going to be done this morning. My name is Zarato Gobeni, I'm the National Spokesperson of Action SA. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to members of the media who are here. Uh, for those who are not, uh, your loss, you will catch it on the live stream, like everybody else in South Africa, but we always are very grateful for the media who are always here to cover our events and take our story to the rest of South Africa. This morning serves for some of us, it's a very critical, critical moment. Because when Action SA started, and it's so funny because we, we, we started just over the 2020s, that four years ago now. It feels like we've been around for a very long time. We are shaking up the establishment. We have redefined what politics can be for South Africa and for South Africans. And I think that everyone who's in this room agrees with me that we have offered South Africans an alternative to the current establishment. People never thought it could be done. New political formations have come and gone. We've seen critical moments uh, before today and before this year. We know that 2024 is a critical moment. However, uh, 2024 is also a defining moment for South Africans to make a choice and make a call, and for South Africans to say our country is worth fighting for. And so we are very grateful to the leadership who had the foresight to heed the call of South Africans when they asked for the president to form his own political party. You all know that we started in the days of the People's Dialogue when the president and his team went around the country to solicit views from South Africans as to whether he should indeed form his own political party, and if so, based on what values, what principles, what aspirations that our, the people of our nation have always sought for since the advent of our democracy. And so this is a very proud moment uh, for Action SA. Welcome once again to each and every one of you and delegates and candidates who are here this morning. I'm excited to see each and every one of you, and I'm excited to hear what it is you're going to have to tell South Africans around your thoughts uh, as to where we are going. Today is going to follow a very simple format. The president of Action SA, Mr. Herman Mashaba, will come up and give us his address and introduce each and every one of you. As the president introduces you, please make your way to the front. And then for those of you who are speaking, you will uh, wait for me to ask you to the podium to speak. That is the, the order of this morning. Um, I believe that if you are looking for restrooms, they are right outside uh, the doors, the main doors. And so all of you are welcome to use them. May I request that we close the back doors um, so that we do not get any feedback or interruptions um, as people move through, especially when uh, cleaning and that happens. With those few words, let me welcome to the podium Mr. Herman Mashaba, President of SNSA. Members of uh, the media, program director, fellow actioners, and my fellow South Africans. Today marks an important moment for Action SA on our mission to fix South Africa. Today it is my honor to announce Team Fix South Africa, a team of candidates that have assembled as part of our parliamentary list that stand ready to address the greatest challenges facing our nation. These candidates will form part of the caucus that hails from diverse backgrounds, coming from both urban and rural communities, the public and the private sector, academic and civil society. They represent the best of South African people. Our candidates were selected following a grueling selection process that saw people from outside of politics putting up their hands to take action to build a better country 
for our people. They bring with them the level of skill and expertise needed for HNSA to turn around the decay which took place under the ruling party and restore South Africa to a path of prosperity. With this announcement today, we want to demonstrate to the South African people that we are not a party all marked by career politician with no real world experience in the portfolios they are meant to lead. This is a stark contrast to the political establishments who fill parliament seats with party loyalists who would never be hired in the private sector. No, Action SA depth of leadership reflect the parliamentary caucus with the skills necessary to enter government and fix South Africa. We are a party that is ready to take action because only action will fix South Africa. Fellow South Africans, the team Fix South Africa we are presenting today forms part of HNSA's commitment to streamline the executive and revise the ministerial handbook. Our objective is to form a lean and efficient executive that prioritizes performance over patronage and public service over PECs. Given the mandate to govern, an XAA administration would reduce the number of national government departments to approximately 20 and eliminate the position of deputy ministers in all departments. We would reduce the benefits ministers receive including excessive catering and travel allowances, slash the budget for VIP protection, and ensure that ministers are always transparent to the South African people about the action they take. At the time of fiscal constraint and the cost of living crisis that is ravaging our nation, the packs of ministers should be slashed before any other budgetary cuts. Leaders must set an example for fiscal responsibility. This will save the South African government hundreds of millions of in expenditure, which can be reprioritized to frontline service delivery. Fellow South, Af South Africans, today, as I'm speaking to you now, the ruling party is also releasing its list of career politicians where many have been found complicit in corruption. While the ANC may choose career politician, action they say have chosen people who are best qualified to do the job. I want to commit you today that action they say government will be appointed based on merit and not political connections. Whether action they say governs with a majority or in coalition, we will be uncompromising in ensuring that we appoint the best persons to cabinet positions we have real wealth experience in the portfolios they are supposed to lead. We will not engage in cater deployment, nepotism, and cronyism. We will only appoint people on merit and with impeccable track record with a commitment to clean governance and service delivery. Today, we are not paying lip service to our commitment to ethical leaders, but putting weight to action because only action will fix South Africa. While other political leaders may make space for compromised leaders within the ranks, Action SA is unwavering in our commitment that our leaders must be above reproach. All our candidates have undergone, undergone an extensive and rigorous selection process. We spend less, countless hours interviewing candidates, and scoring tests to ensure that we only send the best possible to Parliament to possibly fill cabinet positions. We didn't seek to find only prominent candidates, but to find people who possess the necessary qualifications and expertise to tackle our most pressing issues. Action SA wanted to ensure that don't hire career politicians to keep position in cabinet and government, but people who have real world experience of the portfolios that we intended to leave. We wanted to ensure that where we have someone in education portfolio, that person is an education expert who has experience in turning around educational institutions. We wanted to ensure that where someone leads the finance portfolio, that a chartered accountant who knows how, to, how a balance sheet and the, and the books work. For healthcare, 
we wanted to ensure we have a doctor under the police portfolio. We have a former captain of police under agriculture. We have a former farmer. And under justice, we have an advocate who would be leading our interventions. While under political establishment, parliament may have become a retirement village for many. Action SA wanted to ensure we invigorate our caucus with people who have real world experience. The fixed, the team fixed South Africa, we are therefore presenting today. It's not a long list of career politicians, but people who have worked in the industries that are being appointed to lead. Who better to lead these ministries and departments than the people who have been practicing in these fields? Uh, who possesses the skills? We need to fix South Africa. Fellow South Africans, it now gives me great joy to unveil some of the candidates to represent Action SA in Parliament following the 29 uh, provincial and national elections. They will be announced in no particular order. They form part of Action SA, Team Fix South Africa, and have been appointed in specific portfolios to ensure we can hit the ground running when we enter government. They represent some of the most patriotic South Africans who are committed to undoing the legacy of the current cruel and uncaring government. Those who form part of Team Fix South Africa have already served this country in the public and private sector for many years and are now ready to take that contribution further. They represent some of the best minds and skills we have in the country today. It gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for land and agriculture Arthur Trollip, Mr. Trollip, <laughs> Trollip also serves as our leader of executive business in Parliament. Who is the better person to really lead us in part when we go into Parliament? Arthur has a track record in public service, having previously served as the Mayor of Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality and as parliamentary leader of opposition in the National Assembly. He studied, he studied agricultural management at the University of Natal, today known as the University of KwaZulu Natal in Peter Marisbeck, after which he traveled abroad working as a student farmer in Australia, New Zealand and Scotland. And he farmed his family in, in Bedford for over 20 years, where he was chairman of the Farmers Association. He is well placed not only to lead business of Action SA government in Parliament, but to ensure that agriculture and land reform receive the attention it deserves. Fellow South Africans, it gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for basic education, Dr. Tsunofelo Mafora. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Mafora's academic journey reflects their commitment to continuous learning with a PhD, Master's and Bachelor's in Education, Management and Leadership, and Diplomas in Science and Counseling. A PhD thesis explored the complexities of job satisfaction among principals and educators in previously disadvantaged secondary schools. And as a consultant, she led a project to evaluate and fix schools across the country. Dr. Mavora's professional career reflects the skills necessary to lead the portfolio, currently serving as the Dean of Academics at, D at Dublin College and CT College. I have full confidence in Dr. Mavora to fix the education system that has failed our children. Next, it gives me joy and great pleasure to announce Team Fix South Africa member of Higher Education, another doctor, Dr. Tutu Faleni. Thank you, Doc. Dr. Faleni's uh, experience uh, 
spans over three decades of experience in navigating the education landscape in both academic and professional pursuits. Dr. Van Lenge is an accomplished education expert with the skills necessary to fix higher education and ensure we expand access. Dr. Van Lenge holds a BA honors from the University of Vets, a Master of Education in Educational Management from the University of Johannesburg, and a Doctor of Philosophy along with additional postgraduate qualifications in governance and leadership. Dr. Valeni has also served as a member of the Northwest Provincial Legislature and lectured at both the University of South Africa and Northwest University. He has first-hand experience in the challenges facing our higher education institutions and the knowledge to take action to fix them. Fellow South Africans, it gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for international relations Mr. Sodi Nguyen. <laughs> Mr. Nguyen will be joining us uh, later on. Uh, he's busy uh, in a lecture in Switzerland, but uh, he will, uh, uh, will uh, get him on air later on when it's time for him to speak. Mr. Nguyen is an accomplished communications expert, a spoken political commentator, an economist, who has long spoken out against the road that has led to South Africa's decline. Mueng holds a BA degree and majoring in French and linguistics from the University of Wales and a master's degree from a French university. With his experience in tourism marketing, lecturing at the EU Business School and recognition as a well-versed commentator on South Africa's political issues, he brings with him the international experience necessary for the portfolio to ensure that we are able to fix South Africa's international reputation. More importantly, he's what, what it takes to fix our damaged international image and ensure that we restore South Africa as a flag bearer of human rights and so forth. Fellow South Africans, it now gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for economic development leaders Thank you, Peter, for accepting this huge responsibility. He's only 31 years old. Peter is a distinguished economist and political scientist renowned for his expertise in macroeconomic uh, forecasting, economic impact assessment, and political economic risk analysis. With a robust educational background encompassing esteemed institutions such as the London School of Economics, the University of Pretoria, and Fordham University, Peters has honed his skills and knowledge in the various facets of economics and international relations. As a senior economist at Oxford Economics Africa, Peter serves as a principal analyst for Nigeria and Mauritius, while covering a myriad of other African economies. His contributions include the development of the Oxford Economics Africa political economic risk model, a groundbreaking tool for quantitatively assessing policy risks across the continent. His research has been published in academic journals, and he has received accolades such as the Best Economic Forecaster Award and the Founders Medal for Best Economic Research in South Africa. Unlike many ministers, we have failed to grow our economy. Peter has the knowledge and expertise to place us on a path to economic prosperity. Growing the economy goes hand in hand with fixing our energy crisis and end load shedding. It does give me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for Energy and Mineral Resources, Mr. Mpo Madisha. Thank you, Mpo. As you can see, another young bright mind. 
Madisha is a qualified mechanical engineer who has extensive experience in engineering, engineering education, science policy, and project management. He has hands-on experience in the design of nuclear energy production systems and hydrogen production systems. Having served as an engineering lecturer at the University of Pretoria, Madisha served on the ministerial committee to evaluate the effectiveness of the national system of innovation. He has also worked at the National Energy Research Group as a nuclear research assistant in the Netherlands. He was also a board member of the support of the Black Science, Technology and Engineering Professional Group, which sought to expand the number of black professionals working in STEM industries. Madisha has the experience and knowledge that those who have caused the energy crisis uh, in South Africa today lack. Fellow South Africans, it gives me great joy to announce Team South Africa member for Infrastructure and Public Enterprises, Mr. Michael Blumen. Similar to the experience needed to fix energy, we have someone with the experience to oversee an extensive project of infrastructure investment into the critical areas of roads, water, rail, ports, energy, and human settlement. This is the economic infrastructure we need to grow our economy. Michael holds a BA Honours in Politics and Environmental Science from Rhodes University and has completed a postgraduate diploma in Business Administration from Bayes Business School. More importantly, he served as my Chief of Staff in the city of Johannesburg during my term as Mayor, where he led a team that oversaw the largest municipal budget in South Africa. He played a critical role in redirecting two billion rands of wasteful expenditure to infrastructure, prioritizing and expanding our capital investment programs through the Dipetuho Initiative, a program that saw us direct wasteful expenditure to the core infrastructure developments that needed it most. It was also central to the process of signing a memorandum of understanding with municipal unions ensuring that strikes were a thing of the past in the city of Johannesburg due to Martina as the mayor. Since the 2021 local government elections, Michael has been acting as a point person in managing the coalitions in which I involved and was himself central to the construction of the multi-party charter. As someone with experience in both public uh, and management and political management, he has what it takes to unlock the bear backlogs facing our, our country infrastructure decay. Alongside functional economic infrastructure, we need a healthy population to ensure prosperity. And now, fellow South African, thus, it gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member of health, Dr. Kosi Litlam. Thank you, Doc. Someone I've known uh, for over 40 years, but uh, he's not here because uh, we've got a long uh, lasting uh, friendship. He's here because he's Dr. Palitape. Dr. Palitape founded the Africa Medical Association and has served as the president of the Health Professional Council of South Africa chairman of the South African Medical Association, president of the World Medical Association, and executive director of the Tsepan Trust. <laughs> Additionally, he currently holds a position as a member of the Global Hygiene Council. Dr. Litlapre, Litlapre has made history by becoming the first black ophthalmologist in South Africa. <laughs> the wealth of his expertise has been instrumental in the development of XNSA healthcare policy, culminating in an expert-led process that relied on engagement with healthcare leaders like Dr. Litlape. Having co-founded the Africa Harm Reduction Alliance, which focuses on creating awareness 
and educating people about the need to reduce harm and promote well-being. Dr. Litlapne is well equipped to realize our vision where healthcare is not only reactive but also proactively managed to improve the quality of life of our people. Along with healthcare, we'll take a laser-like focus on community welfare, including drugs and substance abuse. It now gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member of social development, no good Kela Makos Kisi. Ma'am, Kisi. thank you so much all the way from the Western Cape. Uh, joined Action SA during the People's Dialogue. Uh, she's really one of the people instrumental in the formation of this party. Not to Kella, as a person with physical disabilities, she brings a unique pers perspective necessary to address the various social ills and marginalization facing many South Africans. Makodlele holds a certificate and diplomas in disability rights public leadership and social media marketing from various institutions, including the Center for Human Rights, the University of Pretoria, and the a Political Academy in Southern Africa. Her journey in education and community development is underscored by her role as the brand custodian and marketing manager at Cape Peninsula University of Technology, where she contributed significantly to the Graduate School of Business Management. Acting as the project manager for the Graduate Center of Management, she played a pivotal role in establishing the brand, developing, developing marketing strategies, and fostering stakeholder relationships. As an activist for social issues, and someone who knows these issues firsthand, I can think of no one better to lead this portfolio. It now gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member of Substance Abuse, Erilyn James, one and only. Erilyn, her inspiration, uh, inspiring anti drug and social activism, distinguishes her as a true advocate for the empowerment of communities. Her activism led her to be appointed by the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture as a board member of the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sport. She has also been appointed by the Minister of Social Development as a board member of the Central Drug Authority and is a member of the South African Police National Anti-Drug and Gangsterism Priority Forum. Darylin authored the Dear Dead Open Letter which garnered widespread outcry for Asian intervention to stop the scourge of gang violence. This led to the former president personally visiting El Dorado Park, where he acknowledged her continued fight. Derelin founded the Yellow Ribbon Foundation, a nonprofit organization and registered community-based center dedicated to strengthening the fight against substance abuse through educational, faith-based, community social entrepreneurial initiatives. Central to fighting substance abuse is fighting the drug dealers that fuel this problem. Fellow South Africans, it now gives me great joy to announce Team South Africa member for justice and correctional services. Let me call on the floor, advocate Julie Seaton. Advocate Satan holds an LLB from the University of South Africa and National Certificate in Municipal Finance Management from Stellenbosch University. She has a distinguished legal career, including serving as the director of the University of Orange Free State Legal Aid Clinic and later establishing and successfully running her own legal practice with uh, extensive expertise in both civil and criminal litigation. Advocate Seton, aside from her accomplished legal background, brings to the table 
a breadth of experience in local governance. She has served as the speaker of the Nisna Council, where she has nurtured a well-versed understanding of municipal governance. Advocate Seton knows our justice system intimately and knows what it needs to, uh, to be done to fix it. It now gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa Member of Law and Order, Tuli Kosa. Thank you, ma'am, all the way from Bumalanga. Tuli joined the South African Police Service in 1986, where she served in various roles from detective services to administration. She contributed to the launch of the Police Prison Civil Rights Union Pop Crew and has a commitment to community policing and trust building between law enforcement and communities. She was previously also involved with the Institute for Democracy in South Africa, IDASA, and later served as the Chief Security Officer at the Kruger National Park from 2015 to 2016. In a country where fighting crime must be a top priority, we need someone with knowledge of policing to turn around this scourge of crime that is facing our country. Fellow South Africans, it gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member for defense, Mr. Mohamed Rafiq Shah. Thank you, Seb, all the way from KZN. Mr. Shah's political journey is marked by a profound commitment to the struggle for freedom and social justice, beginning with his involvement in the ANC in 1975, where he spent 17 years in political exile. Mohammed has been a steadfast advocate for progressive change. Upon his return in 1988, he actively participated in, in the UDF, contributing to the fight against apartheid. Shah's academic qualifications underscore his deep understanding of religious studies and theology, with degrees ranging from bachelor's to master's levels in Islamic studies, Arabic language and literature, and theology. He has served in both the provincial and national legislatures where he made invaluable contributions. He served as a former shadow minister of defense, where he served on a parliamentary select committee on defense and security. In his social life, Shah's commitment to fostering religious harmony and community cohesion is evident through his role as a member of the SGU Islamic Council of Theologists, as the esteemed Imam of the Raza Mosque in Phoenix, in Kaiserdam. It now gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa member of Home Affairs. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to announce Lerato Ngobeni. Ladies and gentlemen, securing our borders and fixing the dysfunctional Department of Home Affairs is critical to restoring the rule of law. Goveni is an experienced program manager and sustainability specialist who has worked in both corporate South Africa and civil society organizations, including Marian Roberts Limited, African Access Holdings, the Royal Bafuke Nation, Nelson Mandela and Hans Seidel Foundations, Harvard University Center for African Studies, Africa Office, Safer South Africa Foundation, the Mike Masingita Nkuna Charitable Trust, and Reimagine South Africa. The Rato holds a BA Honors in Political Science and Government uh, Summa Cum Laude from Johnson C. Smith University, North Carolina, USA and is an alumni of the Tabon Baking Leadership Institute. She's a councillor in the city of Johannesburg and served with distinction as chairman of Section 79 Environment, Infrastructure and Services Oversight Committee. The Rato is also HNSA national spokesperson. 
She understands the importance of securing our borders, but also the need to ensure that we place the government and not the immigrants at the center of our problem. So, the right job. Huge responsibility. It gave me great joy, fellow South Africans, to announce Fix South Africa member of public service, Nompulelo Edward. <laughs> Underlying a functional government is a functional civil service. Edward's track record as a public servant at the call phase of service delivery speaks for itself about why she's the best person to lead this particular portfolio. She holds a bachelor's degree in social sciences and a postgraduate diploma in marketing from the University of Cape Town. She also has a postgraduate degree in small business and entrepreneurship an MBA from the Genesis Business School and is currently pursuing a PhD at the University of Zululand. Edward spent many years working as a manager at the South African Revenue Service, where she helped it fulfill its core mandate and therefore has experience in public service. And as a councillor in the city of Johannesburg, Edward served on the Economic Development Committee, where she has championed a number of socio-economic issues affecting South Africans, including expanding opportunities for women. I have no doubt, I have no doubt whatsoever that Edwards has the required public service understanding to ensure that we restore a spirit of excellence and service delivery in our public service. It now gives me great joy to announce Team South Africa, member of, for corporate governance and traditional affairs, my colleague, Mr. Silo Lidi. <laughs> Mr. Lidiga studied education at Teflop, an institution where I was there for one and a half years, to date known as University of Limpopo, and became active in student politics within the Azanian student organization before serving as the leader on the SRC. His involvement in organizing student protests against apartheid resulted in his detention in 1985, during which he experienced the brutality and justice of the apartheid security apparatus. Lediha proceeded to become a lecturer at Sikukune College of Educa Education, where he proceeded to obtain his honors in history. In 1994, Lediha became the director of education in Limpopo, before leaving to enter business where he gained experience in IT, agriculture, consulting, and manufacturing. And in 2022, he joined Action SA where he served as our Limpopo Provincial Chairperson. With experience as a public representative and close ties to traditional leadership, I am confident that Lidiha will ensure that this portfolio receives the attention it deserves. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Finally, it gives me great joy to announce Team Fix South Africa mem member for finance, Mr. Alan Beasley, also from KTM. <laughs> no government can function without money and a responsible fiscal policy. That is why I've left our finance team member for last. Alan is a qualified chartered accountant and holds a master's degree in development studies from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Skills is uh, essential to managing the finance portfolio. He's an accomplished businessman who before 2021 local government elections took on the fight to save South Africa. Alan joined Action SA to undo the decay in, in home city of Devon, where he served as an action as a councillor in the Etiquine municipality. Having owned and managed successful private company and served on numerous boards and committees, Beasley brings with him a world of experience to our party. Beasley understands that government, like business, is about 
the balance in the books. You can borrow without rev you cannot borrow and uh, you cannot borrow without the, the revenue and you can spend you cannot spend without a plan for that spending. I trust that Alan has what it takes to restore our financial position and ensure that money is spent where it is needed most. Frontline services and infrastructure investment. Fellow South Africans, together with these individuals, we need to form a fixed South Africa, headed by me, who Action SA believes brings the necessary skills and experience for us to turn around South Africa and restore the country to a path of prosperity. These colleagues represent the best of our country and our patriotic, ethical South Africans who are committed to ensuring that all people in the country live a better life. Unlike the political establishment, they aren't here to earn big salaries, but have the, put their hands up to do the work to bring action across South Africa. From today on, they will hit their portfolios running to show South Africans that it is possible when an alternative government is elected to lead this country. They will be active in our communities and speak to us about uh, in our communities and our people whose voices have long been forgotten. I invite members of the media to follow them in the weeks ahead as they spread the message of hope Action SA has to offer. Team Fix South Africa shows that Action SA has the depth of leadership necessary to lead this country and build a better future for our children. They show that it is possible to have a credible alternative in South Africa that is able to steer the country in a better direction compared to the past 10 years of failed ruling party. But for South Africa to achieve a different outcome than before, it will require that voters take action and vote for an alternative at the ballot box this year. We cannot do the same thing and expect different outcomes. That is why Action SA is presenting Team Fix South Africa to provide a credible alternative to the current failed political establishments. They show that a different future is possible, but for that to happen, it will require that voters take action at the ballot box because only action will fix South Africa. Team Fix South Africa, I now invite you to go out and help us fix our country, South Africa. I invite some of Action A's, uh, Action A's uh, Team Fix South Africa now to address the media. And I would like to really thank you for this opportunity. But more importantly, for all of you to really accept in this terrible, brutal job. If you think uh, this is a walk in the past, I can assure you, you ask me. But one thing that I can also assure you, this is one of the most rewarding jobs. To be given an opportunity to serve your country, for me, it's one of the most privileged positions no money can buy. So thank you so much for accepting this huge responsibility, and I look forward to working with you going forward. Thank you very much. Conflict of interest. <laughs> uh, I, I have to uh, be grateful, be honored, be inspired. All the feelings that are going through, uh, you know, you don't really feel it until it happens. And it's kind of striking me, and I'm sure uh, my fellow colleagues are feeling the same. Uh, when you got the call, you were like, ah, me, why me? And then you were looking in, and then you had to reassure yourself that everything you have done to date um, you know, has prepared you for this moment. And I think each and every one of us should give ourselves a little pat on the back to say, you know, we all deserve to be here. We worked very hard, and we hope that we will use each and every skill, and uh, not just that, but emotional intelligence and heart to do the work that lies before us. So, uh, thank you very much. I had to say that so that my nerves can leave me um, as quickly as possible. Colleagues, as the president has already besieged us, I want us, and I don't know if you're like me, uh, where we don't know who the ministers are today anymore. Uh, the only one I remember is the Italian. 
because I think he's the most as well. Um, we don't know who they are anymore because they don't necessarily affect us as they should. We don't feel what they're doing anymore and we stop caring. Uh, I know for sure I stop caring who they are because they're all just recycled. And so I'm hoping that this team of people here is going to inspire South Africans for better. Colleagues, remember Dr. Tsulufelo Mafora for basic education. I'm reminding those for the record. Remember Dr. Tutu Faleni for higher education. Remember Ethel Trollip for land and agriculture, as well as leader of executive business. We're looking forward to that. Uh, that's unless he does something else. We go to Mr. Trollip uh, and his agilities. Please remember Mr. Solimwen uh, joining us with the map at the back. We are trying to show us that you are global, say, and that this portfolio that you, you have uh, is actually a fitting one for you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Switzerland. Please remember Peter Scribante. Uh, he's going to lead economic development, a portfolio we all need very much. Uh, otherwise, we can't move forward. Uh, we're all worried about how our money is shrinking uh, in the bank, irrespective of how much it is. Mpomadisha, energy and mineral resources. How refreshing, uh, sir. Uh, you don't have a package that is uh, leading you where you can't see where you're going, uh, unlike the current one. Uh, you know the package I'm talking about. Um, Michael Bowant, infrastructure and public enterprises. Big portfolio. Michael, we want to see uh, infrastructure boom in our country. There's lots of work for you. Um, there's, you know, pot potholes. We don't even know what to call them anymore. They are sinkholes, no longer potholes. We can all swim in them, some of them, uh, if you go to Mafiking. So please make sure that you attract or help attract as much investment as possible so that we have an infrastructure boom in this country that can help to provide the many needed jobs. Dr. Kosi Letlape. Good Lord. Uh, Dr. Hossi Ritlabe fried me in one of my uh, ERSD as a chairperson uh, in, in downtown Johannesburg. I didn't know that he was actually testing the chops at Action SA. Uh, and I think, I hope I did a good job, sir, to convince you to be part of us. Welcome. <laughs> we appreciate it very much. Um, wow. Men are together. I don't even know what to say, uh, except that I have deep respect for you and the work that you have to do. Please ensure that we reduce the number of, of people who are on Sasa. Uh, we need better in this country. And I know that you have what it takes to make that happen. Colleagues, please remember Darren and James. Uh, if you don't know by now, now you know. Uh, Darren and James is going to deal with what is very terribly a scourge in our, in, our, in our country with young people on substance abuse, on drugs, and on something I abhor called the hookah. Uh, I don't know what they call it in another way, but this hookah thing, it's all I see uh, in our townships. Uh, that needs to end. Advocate Julie Seaton, the last time I saw you, we were both almost causing uh, the, the party great grief falling off of the letters postering. Um, let's, let's stick to, to what we know, the, the both of us. Uh, let's let let's people who know what they're doing, like the president, uh, proceed with that function. Um, we're hoping that you're going to correct the justice system in this country. Uh, there's too much that is on the go. We all know that um, judges are highly burdened. Cases aren't moving forward. We need better in this country. Um, Metu Lukosa. Where are you? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, we need that face, you know, uh, the strict face, the, the, the determined face. You are replacing somebody with no seriousness whatsoever. And so we know that you, you will do better uh, with, with much more heart and much more care. Law and order. Uh, please remember that. My esteemed colleague uh, in the portfolio, uh, Mohammed Rafiq Shah, for defense, said, you know what we don't want to see with the defense force. We, we know what we don't want to see, um, the things we've seen in the past. Um, my other colleague, Nombu Menelo Edward, 
ma'am, <laughs> for public service, you, you couldn't have another big portfolio. We talk about professionalizing the public service. Uh, I know that you will do it very diligently. Mr. Selenidiha, Kokta, good heavens. Uh, let's hope you are going to help do what needs to be done uh, in terms of making sure that the public service and also the departments and the, not even the departments, the provincial government and the things that need to be done in terms of streamlining what um, Bumi has to do uh, actually is fast tracked. So congratulations on that score. And then finally we have uh, Mr. Alan Beasley. Uh, Mr. Alan Beasley, yourself and uh, Michael Beaumont, uh, please do the right thing. Uh, we, need, we need these finances into the system. And then last but not least, myself. <laughs> myself. Hey, for whom I guess. <laughs> I can assure you we're not building a wall, uh, but we will definitely do better in that score. And with that said, um, you can see I've listed all of the people and I've reminded you of who they are, each and every one of them in their portfolios. However, as you can appreciate, as well as time, uh, there'll be more that you will see and hear from them. At this time, we can't hear each and every one of them. We have selected the few, some of us you've seen us many times, heard our voices many times, and so the new ones who are coming through, we would like for you all to get to hear their voices. And I think that uh, today must be a big day for um, South Africa to realize that we were and have never been and that we are not a one man or one woman show. We have got esteemed South Africans amongst our ranks who can really make sure that we fix our country and move South Africa forward. Uh, having said that, let me welcome uh, Dr. Mafura for basic education. She will be the first one to speak. And after that, <laughs> so I'm telling you to remind yourselves I'm not coming back up until uh, the end so that we don't waste time. She will be followed by Advocate Julie Seaton. Uh, thereafter, Dr. Jose de Tlape, uh, followed by Derlin James. Uh, Mr. Mwen, you will follow, uh, I think as the fifth speaker. And then finally, we will have Peter Scribante. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lerata. Good morning, everyone. Members of the media, the Fix It team. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the president of Action SA, Mr. Mashaba, for inviting me to be part of the Fixit team. It is a task that I intend to carry with dignity that it deserves. I'm going to talk about our take as Action SA on what we see or the state of education in South Africa. And we all agree, and I'm sure South Africans will agree with us, that there's a lot that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mention just a few. We talk of pit toilets, overcrowded classrooms, overburdened and underpaid teachers, disempowered school principals, influence of unions on quality, on employment, even on production in schools, decaying school infrastructure. That pains me the most. Lack of general maintenance and upkeep, especially in township and rural schools. They are falling apart. There was a ceiling that fell on some kids in Tembisa two weeks ago. Poor quality of education outcomes. I'm sure you are aware, South Africans, that there was a study that was made and the discovery was that 81% of South African learners in grade four ages around 10, cannot read for meaning. Mm. This translates to 8 out of 10 grade 4 learners 
not being able to comprehend what they read. That's sad. And this situation is felt right through all the way to tertiary, and you'll agree with me, my fellow daughter here. We feel it even in tertiary. And we can even see the evidence of high dropout rates of first year students. They drop out between 50 and 60% of first year students drop out. I know there could be many reasons why they drop out. But one of the reasons is that students are not adequately prepared for tertiary studies from basic education. And that's where I think my role is going to be focused. The list I mentioned is not exhaustive. And I'm sure there's more I can get from all of you concerning the challenges that education, basic education, faces in South Africa. So I'm going to address and talk to you about just a few. And due to time, I think I'll just mention four things that we'll be, I'll be talking about this morning. So I'm going to address a few of the solutions that we have in place as Action SA to fix the challenges the country faces in education. Action SA recognizes the role that quality education plays in improving the lives of people in general. We endeavor to come up with systems that will ensure that this is realized in a meaningful and sustainable manner, should be sustainable. So I'm going to mention just four things for this morning. One, we intend to work with teachers to improve learning outcomes. We aim to prioritize the amendment of salary structures for educators through ensuring the allocation of a sufficient budget for this initiative. The structure should take into consideration one's qualification and experience. It can't be a one-size-fits-all. Input should be meshed with output. There should be incentive schemes that we are going to create to reward excellence. Excellence must be rewarded. It must be recognized in schools. And all this is going to be done to attract and retain high caliber professionals to the teaching profession. We are losing too many experienced and skilled teachers because of poor salaries. And you know how it's like in schools. You wait for the principal to retire in terms of promotions and all that. So you are sitting there as a teacher with all the qualifications, with all the experience, with all the skill. You're waiting for this one person to die or to retire before you can apply for perhaps a position. It shouldn't be that way. Let's recognize, let's recognize and acknowledge and reward excellence. So I am very much for this salary structure. We're going to be pushing for that. Number two, education output should be meshed with the needs of the economy. The curriculum structure should take into consideration the needs of the country. We intend as Action SA that vocational training should be paired with academic training to increase skills training right from basic education. At the moment, vocational training is packaged for people in inverted commas who didn't do well in school. Yeah. When we are lacking skills, we lack electricians, we lack and mechanics, we, we like a lot of things, but, but then it has been packaged in a way that our kids don't find it attractive. If we start it right there from basic education and you move all the way, we couple the two, academic and skills. As Action SA, we will structure the vocational and artisan skills that are in demand in our country to increase 
the employment of graduates, we have graduates who are not employed. There's something wrong with our education system. Number three, early childhood development. In my language, in Sitsuana, we say, Lord, you fix it when it is still young. We intend to adopt a scaffolding approach to basic education, starting from the known to the unknown, from the complex, and uh, the simple to the complex. And we will also, as Action say, advocate for mother tongue teaching as a foundation of teaching and the learning of another language and other languages to ensure a firm foundation in language, in basic numeracy and life skills. Are you aware that if a kids who cannot uh, read with comprehension cannot even read uh, with comprehension even in their mother languages? We need to instill critical thinking throughout developmental stages of our children. Ask the question, what is this? Why do we have it here? What is its purpose? Can it be fixed? Can it be made better? Critical thinking. The last thing I'm going to talk about is monitoring, evaluation, and development. We intend, as Section SA, to reintroduce school inspectors. This will be made up of experts who will be there to develop systems to improve performance in schools and also to increase accountability in schools. We cannot look on and see the decay and look the other way. It's time for action. And action essay is just here for that. In closing, I'm going to leave you with this African proverb. It says that even the tallest mountain cannot block the sun. You are not going to block us. We are going to shine as we fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Mr. President, Team Fix It South Africa, members of the media, and those listening. I'm Julie, and I'm here to tell you what we are going to do to fix the justice system in South Africa, uphold the rule of law, and restore law and order to our communities and streets once in Parliament. Having been involved in the legal profession since 1985, I have witnessed the deterioration of our systems and the inability of our criminal justice system to actually bring criminals to book. But we're not here today to dwell in the past. We're here to show you that we can fix the system and we can fix South Africa. Yeah, yeah. We will do this by depoliticizing the police, the NPA, and our Chapter 9 institutions. We will ensure that positions within the NPA, the police, the departments of justice and home affairs are filled with skilled individuals who can do the job, not deployed cadres. We will professionalize these institutions and depoliticize them. We will entrench the independence of the NPA by establishing a direct reporting line to Parliament and ensuring that the budget allocation comes from Parliament. We will reform and review the criminal justice system to ensure that criminals are successfully and swiftly prosecuted. Those who commit violent crimes must be dealt with harshly. When a sentence of life imprisonment is imposed, it must mean exactly that. Yep. We will increase penalties for violent crimes as the punishment for committing a crime must act as a deterrent, which it currently doesn't. The prison system needs, to, needs reform to ensure gangsters cannot operate with impunity within the prison walls. We will establish specialized units to deal with the organized crime that has pervaded every aspect of our society, from taxi mafias to construction mafias, and this must stop. We will free up funding by reducing the expenditure on VIP protection to a cap of 0.5% of the policing budget, and ensure that the NPA and the police are properly resourced. 
We will address the deficiencies of the Department of Home Affairs and ensure the effective rollout of the Border Management Authority to improve the management of South Africa's borders, which currently allow free access to undocumented foreign nationals who must be deported. We welcome those who choose to enter our country legally and who can make a positive contribution to our society. We intend creating a country where the rule of law is respected and citizens feel safe, where you do not drive through areas that have signs warning you that you are entering a hijacking zone, and that you have the confidence to rely on the police in an emergency. But we cannot do this alone. For this team to fix South Africa, we need the help and the support of each and every one of you on May the 29th. Help us to help you and together we can fix South Africa. I thank you. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to thank the first speaker because she took 20 minutes. Now the second speaker took a short time. It makes it difficult for me. <laughs> so you know, when you're trying to fix it, I don't know where to start. Uh, but maybe to start from the fact that uh, to thank the president for having invited me. It's a challenge. But it's, it's a challenge I hope I will be able to live up to. And, and maybe to talk briefly about where we come from as South Africans. Uh, we come from a system that gave us an excellent white public health care system, second to none. One that gave the world its first heart transplant in 1967. That also happens to be the year that the medical schemes happened was passed in Parliament. Parallel to the excellent white healthcare system was a functional system for black public health. It was functional. It's a system that gave our first niece in our family a mitral valve replacement in the early 80s, a bar. So both systems, they were different. I'm not trying to say those were the glory days, but that's where we come from. Where are we now? Where we are today, we have a privatized healthcare system. And we have a public healthcare system. Now, this privatized healthcare system cannot even begin to compete with a previous white public healthcare system where the leaders of the country used to go to public health for the health care, military one, military two, even business people used to use the public health care system. There's a guy called Tony Factor who owned half of downtown Johannesburg. He had his bypass surgery in a public hospital, the Johannesburg hospital. So we we'll must just be mindful of where we come from and where we are. And then we have a public health care system that the ombuds characterized as he wouldn't see any of his family in those hospitals. That's where we've gone to. And when you look at the public health care system that we have now, it could not even compete with the previous black public health. So what has gone wrong? What has gone wrong? And when you look at the challenges that we've had before and the challenges that we have today, one of the key features that creates challenges for us in South Africa is separateness. So we're separate in the past. We even separate today. Now one of the things that is going to happen if I lead is we're going to deal with the separateness. But now that I'm close to retirement age, I've become mature. I no longer say, do away with medical aid. 
Michael will be pissed to you. <laughs> but both systems are sinking. When you look at the private healthcare system, it's too expensive. And it is not as efficient as people think. It dumps people in the public health system. Funds get exhausted. People don't know what they cover for. I'm a doctor. I was on Medicaid, but I never knew what I was covered for. And the way the private system works is that you fully cover as long as you don't get sick. <laughs> and people sit there because they think it's better than the public health system. Now, both of them need to be reformed. Now, there have been reports from the World Bank 2000 Health Report and many other reports that say South Africa's problem is not money. It's not how they, it's how they use it. When you combine what we spend in the privatized, and I use the word privatized because it's not private. You know, people should remember that when we started, when we were making aid, uh, there were tariffs that the doctors that were prepared to charge those tariffs would be guaranteed payment. Now, if you didn't want to take that scale of benefit, you then go out of the system and you'd be characterized as private. That's what private meant. I'm not going to negotiate directly with the patient what my fees are. What we have now is privatized on the back of an act of parliament. Now remember that with this medical scheme, all the three branches of government are on Medicaid. The executive, parliament, and the judiciary. And those that have voted them in there have been left us. So it's separateness like you've never seen. That's what we need to deal with. But we're going to deal with it rationally. Medicaid aids used to give you what white public health care used to give you. All the care that you need for no payment at the point of service. All inclusive. So we do not go about fixing it by creating a third pot of money called NHI. Because you are now turning a two-tier system into a three-tier system. So that won't work. You start by fixing the ills in the system that we have. So you will ensure that in 2019, there was a health market inquiry that came up with recommendations that have not been followed. In 2015, there's a report that Minister Muswaleli commissioned about reforming some of our statutory bodies. The Mayosi report, nothing has been done about it. So in some of those documents, we find the answers of the things that need to be done. Now, what needs to be done in Medicaid aid? It's called Medicaid aid because the members aid each other. It's not insurance because we don't have individual policy. But the aid has been taken away. You've been treated like you've paid for insurance as an individual. Your funds get exhausted. Before, the funds never got exhausted. But when Rina Fender left, she changed the rules. So we need to amend the medical schemes so that it serves the purpose that it is intended for. And one of the things that naked aids should offer is universal health coverage. Do you know what happens if you give universal health coverage? You don't need a complex admin system. When they tell you your front teeth are covered but your back teeth are not, you need a complex system to manage it. <laughs> when they say, you sick, we pay, you don't need a complex system to manage it. You just need to use technology to collect the data and the information to be able to plan better. So you need to bring back universal health coverage. You need to negotiate with the professionals. You need to have a statutory time. People need to know what it costs. It can't just be guesswork. There are recommendations in the health market inquiry that need to be implemented so that we ensure that when you pull resources together, you get the collective benefit of pulling them together. It's not a mutual system. Now, there's wastage on the admin side. When you have complex systems, you administer them. When many claims were made, there was 2% admin fee. Now, it takes 20% of the fee. 
Now, on the public side, there's a lot that needs to be done. But to summarize, because I see you standing. <laughs> we need to professionalize public health. That means paying the healthcare professionals properly, yeah, yeah. so that they don't make money from training. But that needs to be done in the private sector as well. So that you pay people proper professional fees, and the system must own the technology. So the business of trading with technology should stop. We should own the MRIs as the system. And you should pay the radiologists the radiology fee. They can't have people coming to them, oh, you do two scans, you pay the mortgage. You do three, it's profit. You do 10, you can buy in Kems Bay. It shouldn't work for them. It should work differently. So, 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 so lastly, the reason I came here is because your policy says you embrace our reduction. We've got to build health communities. But more importantly, you've said that you are going to use the public health system. Yeah. Yeah. So it becomes my duty to make it safe for you and the rest of South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good morning everyone, indeed a very good morning here from Rosebank. I am truly honored to be tasked with this mammoth task of leading our country from a state of despair and hopelessness. And hopelessness. As an activist, I've always said that, you know, through the years that I've journeyed, the very thing that was meant to destroy me has led me to finding my passion and purpose in life. And what a great honor it is right now to serve my country and to assist in unseating the enablers of drug addiction, to assist in unseating the enablers of homelessness, of GBV, of a high school dropout rate. Those are enablers, it is time for them to move from those seats of power. Yeah, yeah. We are here to stabilize our communities. You are here to say to the many communities when they raise these ills and they, we, they get a response by our government saying, we are coming, we are coming to listen to you. We are coming to host a 10th and a 12th and a 100th in Bezo. We are tired of those in Bezos. We are here as Action is a to fix and to act and to ensure that we see the full implementation of the National Drug Master Plan. As I stand here today, I am not intending on working alone because the issues and the enablers of substance, of drug abuse, impacts all these departments that are represented here today. It impacts health care where we are saying that can we stop criminalizing users? As Action SA, and you will find it in our policy offerings, we are saying it is time to stop criminalizing users and give them the necessary and relevant support that they need. What does that mean? It means opening up health care. It means opening up a space for the many mental patients, our children that have been stuck in addiction for so long that they have now become mental patients. We are saying we are opening up the doors of health care. What are we saying when we say we need to hold hands with education? We are saying that the many kids that are dropping out of school in grade eight, a high dropout rate as a result of drug abuse. We are saying we are deploying additional social workers to address those, those social ills. We are saying when we look at the Department of, of Housing, where there's no development in our communities, where kids are starting to use at the age of six and eight because they are sleeping in one bedroom, no development, it's an enabler. We are saying it's time that we do a costing and we see the scourge of substance, the costing, how much it costs this country. Our prisons are full. Our graveyards are full of talent. What are we saying as Action SA? We are saying communities across South Africa, allow me to observe a moment for all of us of silence for Jocelyn Smith, who's on the hearts of many South Africans at the moment as a result of substance use, as a result of services not reaching 
the most dire communities. The Western Cape government has failed Jocelyn Smith, hopelessly. On day one, we should have seen the implementation of the Children's Act, Chapter 9, that speaks to child neglect. That mother should have been arrested on day one, and maybe, just maybe, we would have had a better opportunity of finding her. The many cold cases of missing children as a result of drugs. We need to revisit those cases, and people need to be held accountable. Action SA will, will, will have a special unit that deals and addresses substance because we understand the enablers such as poverty, such as unemployment. We understand all of those enablers and contributors. We understand that the landscape of our communities need to change. I am grateful to have this, to have been given the stars to lead our country from a space of destruction and stuckness and hopelessness to a space of wellness, to a space of fixing this country. I thank you. I hope you can hear me. Uh, good morning. This is Sir Wayne. I would like to start by thanking President Henry Mashama, the Senate of Action SA and all the leadership for um, having looked at me as somebody who can be part of this team that will fix a country. And, and from so I've been pissing inside the tent from outside <laughs> for many years. <laughs> I've been all put inside the tent and I'm really delighted to be working with such older men and women um, who will be part of this team. All of us are suddenly becoming accidental politicians, like a certain accidental mayor <laughs> a few years ago. <laughs> um, I think that we should, you know, what really brought me to this is some of you might know that I read quite a lot about the South African political space, I look at leaders and all that. And I'm very much attracted to President Mashaba because he is liberty headed and he is ethics driven. And, um, and I'm sure that you would not have brought into this this family, if you want, and people who are, who are not also that way. We should build South Africa on the base, not of hatred. And, you know, we all have reasons to be angry, to be hate, hateful of stuff, to shout. We should build it on love. We should show South Africans that we can build this country on love. I also love the idea, the fact that this party is not focused on one issue. We focus on a wholesomeness of South Africa because our country has become like a bucket filled with holes. We have to work really hard, each one of us, to plug those holes over time, working with other South Africans. Yep. So, internationally, we, we should also not be just known for one thing, we should be known for many things. I would like to really prepare a speech, it's not long, um, because it encompasses the position that I agree with entirely, that, um, and that also, you know, um, ha um, aligns with the way Action SA stands in terms of these things. It's all known, of course, it's common cause that misalignment in South Africa's foreign policy strategy has been the subject of much criticism all over the world. But I wouldn't know if it's, or we should know if it's because of people misunderstand us or if it's because we've been sending uh, mixed messages out there. Now, as we stand at the crossroad of history, it becomes more important than ever to envision a future where the harmonized rhythms of our country's vibrant tapestry resonate within our borders and reverberate with strength and unity worldwide. To that end, South Africa's foreign policy as we venture into the future must be a beacon of hope, echoing the principles of humanity, equality, and justice. And the very foundations upon which our nation was born, or reborn if you want, under the leadership of our, of our first democratic president, Nelson Mandela, who spearheaded a foreign policy posture committed to safeguarding human rights, the advancement of democracy, justice, peaceful resolution of conflict, and indeed the creation of environments where conflict doesn't have to happen. We shouldn't have to wait for conflict, for conflict to happen. We should see the indicators of potential of conflict at home, in the region, in Africa, elsewhere and be known as a country that intervenes, that 
not as a, not opportunistic labor because it's just the right thing to do to live in a world where we share we are part of it this big ecosystem if one part of the ecosystem fails it's just a matter of time before the failure the pain affects other parts of the ecosystem we need South Africa have everything that it takes with amazing South Africans at home and across the world in the diaspora whom we should mobilize to be part of this repositioning of our country and I need to say this people you know ask of action as a well are these guys planning to come out of bricks Action SA has no plans to do that. We will remain in BRICS and we will remain aligned with G20 and other cooperative forums. However, we must underscore that Action SA will only participate in these forums under the condition that such engagement serves our nation's interest. Yeah. It's yeah. And as I said earlier, we are part of an ecosystem. We we cannot be blind to the pain of others, but we cannot do that at the expense of not taking care of our own people at home. We are committed to ensuring that South Africa and her people's interests are consistently prioritized above all else in any international cooperation and engagement. That's what we should be doing. When we have happy people at home, we'll have a better world. We have better, more positive ambassadors of Prince South Africa. Can you imagine if you run a company, you you will spend a lot of money on advertisement, serving yourself as a, as a as a best employer when your employees are the first ones to say, no, that's not true. So the positive messages of hope and love, empathy, maturity that we share in the world must be Sorry, Mr. Murray. Can we just check your microphone for us, please, on your side? We appear to have lost sound. Anyone with lip reading? <laughs> just give us a second, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Let's try again. Mr. Mann, I think you're back. We can't hear you. Oh, uh, uh, Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, this is the first day. <laughs> Tell him again. I think he can't hear us. It's muted on our side. Are you back now? Yes, yes, thank you very much. Is it good now? Oh, yes. this is not good. Okay, I don't know where at what point you lost me. <laughs> Can you hear? Is it good now? So I was I was talking about um, HNSA's planned approach to international relations that prioritizes South Africans, and I was saying that it doesn't in the same way that some companies would be putting out their communications about being the best employer and having their own employees going out to say that's not true that's what they're saying to you out there we need to build a south africa where the south africans are the first and for endorsers of government foreign policy messages when we say to the world this is what we stand for south africans at home and in the vast diaspora in the vast diaspora must feel emboldened by those messages and and confirm them and be the best ambassadors of South Africa. Right now, we don't have that. 
we had a foreign policy that is that supports a party position, a political party position, because for too long the interests of the political party have been placed ahead of the interests of South Africa. This has to stop. It cannot continue. So Action SA is based on the, its approach on, 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 on international relations is based on building a peaceful, democratic, and economically prosperous Africa, ending poverty, unemployment, inequality. And I'm really happy when I went through the policies to look at this reference, to see that this reference to the UN Sustainable Development Goal, because each one of those speaks to everything that SA wants to achieve, action SA wants to achieve at home. So we envisage an Africa characterized by peace, democracy, and economic prosperity. To achieve this vision, Action SA actively supports initiatives to end poverty, unemployment, and equality across the continent in partnership with our partners in the continent. More importantly, one that aims to move South Africa and influence fellow African states to move from being suppliers of primary raw materials to value-added goods that can improve our overall GDPs. Some of you might know this, might not know this, but that Africa is, as I speak, a net importer of food crops. It doesn't make sense that this is the case. We have everything that it takes to be a net exporter of, the, of, food, crop, of food crops if we invest in the right skills, the right policies, the right to technologies, and ensure that young people are inspired to go into, into the productive field across the food chain of, of, of agriculture and other sectors as well. We can position, we should. But we have to not only say things out there for PR services and purposes, but to do things on the ground that support those messages. So through mutually beneficial partnerships, foreign aid, trade and investment, and collaboration with regional organizations and foreign investors, HNSS foreign policy aims to promote economic growth, create job opportunities, and address social disparities not only in South Africa, but across the world. We've seen what happens when you know things fail in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, in, in the key, in the DRC, in Nigeria and other countries. What do they do? They run to South Africa. And because our borders are like non existent, and it's been addressed by some of my colleagues before, people just flock into the country. I live in Switzerland right now. The Swiss authorities know who I am, where I live. If I change my address to go to another municipality, they will know that. Okay, I'm currently home now. But I've been here because of a long history of with silent persecution. That is, there's a story over dinner one day. So, and the third principle, and I'm almost finished, is to, to create a fair multilateral system with equitable representation, balancing global power dynamics. We know that the current structure of the United Nations Security Council, for instance, does not allow the countries in the so-called global south to have the impact that they must have, to have the voice they must have on global affairs. So that there are many structural issues that will take time to change, but that must change. Action as they have has every intention to be part of those conversations, the drive together with its partners across the world to create a more equitable just world in which we can all have a voice at the table, including at the security nation, this is the security, security council of the United Nations. So Action SA believes that the world's multilateral institutions must reflect the diversity of the global community. Therefore, we advocate for a fair multilateral system that ensures equitable representation and power sharing between countries from the global north and south. So South Africa actively participates in the national forums, we all know that, such as the UN, the World Trade Organization, the G20, BRICS, and others, to promote a more inclusive and global uh, order. The only thing that for the difference that we're going to do to, to introduce as action as say, we're going to be values-based, human rights considerations will underpin everything that we say. We are not going to sell humans for gain. Yep. We are not going to do that. South Africa seeks to influence global decision making processes and advocate for reforms that address the imbalances <coughs> in the international system. We work towards creating opportunities for developing nations to have a voice in shaping rules, norms, and the policies that govern the world. And finally, our vision is founded in the aspirations enshrined 
in the preamble to the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. That's what I always say to people. If you are too lazy to read the entire document, just to remind yourself of who we are, who we could be, who we must be, please take the time to read the preamble to the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. So we have to build this country be and be a home to all South Africans, irrespective of what they look like, how they play, how they pray. The wealth of South Africa is in the diversity of its people. Many have left out of pain, not because they don't love South Africa. We have to mobilize those people as, a, as an action as a led government to remember who they are, to work for South Africa, to encourage tourism, to encourage investments, to say good things about the country, not out of, not just for the sake of PR, because at home, Action NC will do everything it must so that everything that we say in the global arena reflects everything that we do at home. I thank you very much, and I really look forward to coming here for this It is our time. Thank you. Yes. My fellow South Africans, actioners, members of the media, South Africa is suffering from the triple threat of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Over the past 30 years, since the start of our democracy, this unemployment figure has doubled from 3.6 million South Africans to 8 million. 8 million South Africans sitting at home who want jobs but can't get any jobs. Officially, our unemployment figure is hovering around 32%, but in reality, it is far worse. The current state of unemployment is dire. It traps millions of South Africans in poverty. It robs them of their potential. It is critical hindrance to South Africa's success, and it is disheartening, and it is abysmal. The problems of unemployment, poverty, and inequality have exploded over the past 30 years of ANC rule. 30 years of broken promises. 30 years of corruption and cronyism. 30 years of the ANC putting themselves first and above everyone else. Enough is enough. <laughs> Creating jobs and reducing unemployment is a cornerstone of Action SA's mission. We believe in the power of all South Africans and we, as an Action SA government, will ensure that we unlock South Africa's potential. Action SA's job creation platform rests on three pillars. A vibrant private sector functioning on a competitive market-based economy. Entrepreneurship. Small businesses are the backbone of South Africa's economy and yeah, yeah. our future success. Yeah, yeah. And thirdly, a stable and reliable Action SA government which will attract international investors and companies to our shores. Using these three pillars as our foundation, the future Action SA government will prioritize five policy avenues. The first thing, we will amend the Labor Relations Act to reduce the economic and political power of trade unions. <laughs> Secondly, we will prioritize entrepreneurship and SMEs by empowering them, exempting them from collective bargaining agreements, and providing them with low-interest government-backed loans. Thirdly, we will invest in educational infrastructure, improve our schools, and build fiber and computer centers in underserviced communities. <laughs> Action SA will direct funds to vocational training and get South Africans the skills they need. We will build technical colleges, additional universities, teaching, nursing, agriculture, and policing colleges as well. Fourthly, Action SA will make sure, make, make it easier for skilled foreign workers to get employment visas and contribute to our society. We will create a pathway to citizenship um, for those that employ more than 50 South Africans and invest in the South African economy. Um, finally, South Africa, uh, Action SA will create a voluntary um, service year for 18-year-olds, as education and skills training is crucial to our country's success. My fellow South Africans, 30 years of ANC rule is enough. 
30 years of failed promises is enough. 30 years of corruption is enough. And only by taking action and voting Action SA will we unlock our true potential. I thank you. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, we're at the end of the session. I think that it can be reiterated enough the caliber, the quality, the depth of conviction that you see here this morning. Congratulations once again, colleagues, each and every one of you. Uh, let me end on a contrary note. Uh, I heard on the radio this morning, and I hope that what I'm about to say um, is going to illuminate the veracity of why these people that are sitting here. Um, I heard uh, over, the, over the radio this morning that the ANC Youth League, in their true fashion, as always, is advocating for um, the members of the Youth League and members of the ANC to be prioritized for job opportunities. Uh, I heard that this morning. In their true fashion, I'm hoping that South Africa has hears that message loud and clear. Colleagues, we can't keep on doing the same thing and hoping for different results. This election is going to be a hard one one but we are ready, prepared, able, and capable, unlike the current government, which has absolutely no capacity to move us forward. With that said, thank you all very much. My name is Narato Ngobeni. Um, check your borders at home and everywhere else. I'll be, I'll be coming for you. Thank you very much. Have a good morning.